Okay, now we're getting in to the one dish that scared me the most, and that was poultry, whether it's chicken or turkey. I think I was watching a movie called The Accidental Tourist, and one of the characters slow roasted a turkey for 12 hours, and everyone was afraid to eat it because it would poison them. And I didn't really know what that meant. I just knew that I didn't know how to cook a chicken, and it's actually incredibly simple. So first, I've just unwrapped the chicken. I'm gonna pull out the gizzards and everything from the inside, the giblets and that. Clear out the cavity. Uh, some people use those. Uh, I do not. So I've just basically wrapped it in tin foil to throw it into the garbage uh, and make sure that I throw that away this evening. Uh, what's really important is that you wash your chicken in cold water and make sure it's really clean. It's really simple to do. Just rub it down like that. Fill the cavity with water. Pour that out. Do it again. Rub off both sides. Cut it one more time. And there we go. And now I'm going to pat it dry uh, with some paper towels and we're ready to start. I'll be back in one second. The best chicken I ever had uh, was in France at a restaurant called Le May Louis and they would coat the chicken in duck fat. Not very healthy. Uh, you can also do it in butter. Again, not very healthy. So I'm going to use olive oil and salt and pepper. So the reason why I was really scared about cooking poultry, whether it's a chicken or a turkey, is if you don't do it properly, you can get really sick. Uh, so the rule of thumb for me is uh, 20 minutes a pound at 400 degrees in a roasting pan. This is a five pound turkey, uh, so we'll be doing it for an hour and 40 minutes. Um, and all I do to prepare the chicken to go is I take my brush and I brush olive oil all over the bird. And I've got a mixture of two tablespoons of salt, one tablespoon of pepper, and I'm going to sprinkle that all over the chicken. And that's going to help it really crust up. I'm going to baste it again at about an hour into the cooking. And just sprinkle this on like this. And again, I've always found it amazing the things that you seem to be the most scared over, at least for me, uh, they actually end up being kind of really simple as long as someone takes the time to explain it for you. Uh, okay, I think that looks really nice. Inside the chicken in the cavity, I'm going to take some rosemary. I'm going to put that right in there and fill that up. That ball that you hear squeaking is my new puppy. Her name is Shirley Jean, and this is her favorite meal. And then I'm going to take about four or five cloves of garlic, and I'm going to push those deep, deep back in the cavity as well. Again, this just creates a beautiful aroma in your house, uh, but it also really does flavor the chicken really nicely. And here with the last clove of garlic, I'm going to take my chicken, and I'm going to put it in the roasting pan like that. Now, this is a funny thing. Uh, certainly when I started doing this, uh, when I started cooking, I, I made a lot of mistakes. Uh, one of them, I actually cooked the chicken upside down. Uh, and I was incredibly embarrassed uh, about that. And so if you're not really familiar with doing this, just imagine the chicken running and the legs have to be pointed up. And that way you'll cook the breast and the, the chicken will brown really nicely. And we're going to put that in now. Uh, I've taken a look at the time. And this is going in for an hour and 40 minutes, 400 degrees. The rack is set in the middle of the oven. And I slide it in like that. And there we go. We'll see you when she comes out. The chicken's been in the oven for about an hour at 400 degrees. I'm gonna take it out. I'm gonna baste it again with the olive oil and put it back in for the last 
40 minutes. And it smells fantastic. And this will really help brown it, crispen up the skin. And I try to be really generous with this. And it smells so good. And that's good. Good to go back in the oven. And there we go. See you when it's finished. Okay, we have cooked the chicken for an hour and 40 minutes. It was five pounds, 20 minutes a pound. Shirley Jean can smell it. There we go. First thing I'm going to do is I am going to take a thermometer and I am going to test right in there. And the temperature needs to be 165, 165 degrees Fahrenheit. And it is over that. So we are good to go. I'm going to let that sit for a second. I'm going to take the chicken out. Now, another lesson, you can take all of this and make an incredible gravy with it. Uh, but I actually have a gravy set aside, so I'm going to go with that. But the pan drippings can be really amazing. Just a little flour and some chicken stock. And as I let the chicken sit, I'm going to make a side dish, which is really, really simple. And I have never, ever met a child who doesn't like this. And I, I was a really picky eater when I was a kid. And so my poor mom had to navigate a lot to get uh, me and my twin sister, Rachel, to eat our dinners. Um, this one is foolproof. I have never, as I said before, met a young person uh, who doesn't love it. I'm going to make some stuffing and it's really, really simple. I have two cups of breadcrumbs with Italian seasoning. Italian seasoning you can get off of any spice rack at, uh, at a supermarket. I've got one stalk of celery and four tablespoons of butter. And for the two cups of breadcrumbs I'm using one and a half to one and two thirds cups of water. So I'm going to take my water on high, get the right burner, and I'm going to bring that to a boil. Now I'm going to put the celery and the butter in early uh, because I want the celery to really soften and that takes a minute. So I'm going to put that in now as that starts to heat up and I'm also going to put in the butter now so it can start to dissolve in the water. And there we go. Now, when this comes to a boil, I turn off the burner, I put in the breadcrumbs, I let it sit for five minutes uh, with the top on the, on the pot, and, uh, and then literally in five minutes, pull out a fork, start to flake it up, and it is good to go. And again, uh, I've not met any young person who doesn't like the stuffing with the chicken. Uh, as soon as this is ready to go, we'll come back to you and then we'll carve the chicken. Okay, it's boiling. In go the breadcrumbs. Get them completely covered. Stir them into the, the water, the butter, and the celery. Cover them up. see my dog right now. It's her favorite thing. I use it as a treat 
Uh, I feed her after everybody else has eaten so she doesn't beg. Uh, but she can smell it. She's, she knows it's going to be a nice night for her. Okay, so let's carve the chicken. I'm going to pull it off the rack like so. I still grab my oven mitts because it's still really hot. And again, I can't tell you how many times I have burnt myself like that. Uh, I'm going to get a paper towel to clean up the cutting board. Now, something I use a lot uh, when carving, whether it's a chicken or a turkey, uh, I will use scissors as well as a knife. Uh, makes it so much more simple to cut the wings off. Makes it so much more simple to cut the legs off. Uh, and it just expedites everything. So I'll move this to the center of the cutting board. I'm gonna start with the wings. And all you wanna do is you wanna just feel around for the joint. Uh, and that will come off really simply like that. Same on this side here. Same thing with the legs. I actually like to use a serrated knife when I carve. Uh, I just find that it works a little better for me. And then I'm going to just get right. And you can see how moist this chicken still is. and the rest of the chicken and then I'll put it in the center. Now, the chicken is incredibly moist uh, and so it's nice to have uh, a paper towel handy uh, to clean up the cutting board so you just don't get completely drenched in the juices. Okie doke, I need a fork. And I'm just going to feel for the spine, which is right there, the breastplate. And I'm going to take the left one first, so I'm going to just carve down right along the bone, all the way through there. Do the same on the other side. And just for presenting, uh, it's nice to do the whole two breasts and now here we'll start to just pull off all the extra meat. And anything from a three and a half to four and a half, five pound chicken will very comfortably serve four people. Uh, and you will have leftovers. Which the dog in your house will be grateful for. And again, I want to remind you, I'm, I certainly don't, by any stretch of the imagination, <clears throat> excuse me, think I'm a great cook. Uh, I think the reason why I wanted to share some of these recipes with you is because I was scared of cooking for so long. Uh, I don't know if it's because as a person I don't necessarily always follow directions. Uh, but it was amazing how much I enjoyed it once uh, friends of mine over the years kind of 
explained things uh, and, and taught me how to do stuff properly so that uh, you know I wasn't going to poison my children or, or, or my friends. Uh, and so if you do get a chance to follow some of these recipes and it does help you get over uh, your fear of cooking, uh, I am thrilled. Basically, uh, aside from the length of the time it takes to cook the chicken, uh, the prep work is not very long. And here you have a really nice dinner for three or four or five people. See you soon. This is how it's done. Now this is how it's done.